Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lee Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Late Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here, another special edition of the show. So I got invited to come over here. We're gonna talk with Brian Page and uh, Rick um, Ramos. 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 I'm sorry, Rick. We, we, Rick and I had lunch, we broke bread together. <laughs> <laughs> it, remember Ramos like Ramos. a bouquet. Like a bouquet. Like a bouquet. There you go. Um, and Riggs, is it Alberico? Is it Alberico? I mean, how am I supposed to pronounce it? It's Alberico. Alberico. Okay. Right. I mean, figured I'd say it the correct way. I, I gotta say it correct because it's Dad's name. There you go. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, so we're at, we're at Alberico's fine wine. So this is uh, not just a retail shop, but also a restaurant. Right. So um, and uh, Brian Page of Page Sellers. Right. Yes. So. Um, so we are going to be talking about some wine, we're going to be talking about some food. Uh, I'm real excited. We're doing a, a winemaker dinner tonight, and um, so this is going to be real exciting. Uh, first of all, Brian, kind of tell us who you are and kind of how you got into all this. Well, heaven forbid my name is Brian. Um, I come from the land of Napa Valley in the California region of the United States. Um, this is what I do is I make wine. I love this stuff. Uh, we kick ass and, and my brother and I and just work our butts off and try to be as much hands-on we can on everything. Uh, it's a small garage winery. Uh, been going since 1997. Nice. Yeah. Now, you we were talking earlier, you've been in restaurants, so you kind of started... I've been cooking since I was 16. Julia Child's my hero. All right. Props to her because she's an awesome lady. I've met her a few times in my life. God rest her soul and all that noise. But um, she was a big inspiration when I was a kid of just seeing how you can take the finer things of life. But it's not the finer things of life. It's just life. So you can have you can get a chicken. You can cook it really well or just F it up. Right. So, you know, one thing with Julia or Julia Nina is, is that she taught me as a kid, you know, I mean, really young, I was watching her in black and white back in the right. day, is that you can have the finer things of life and it's not the finer things of life. And it's the thing that I think the United States is just starting to learn is that it just is proper technique understanding that you know what you're cooking understanding what you're bringing to the table getting people to the table that's one of the lost art that's actually start I feel starting to come back here in the United States it was amazing because getting people to the table that is life you're feeding your body you're feeding your soul and you're feeding your soul even more when you've got that conversation you got your friends that you love and even the ones you can't stand but they're at the table and you're breaking bread and you're drinking bubbles first just you know rule but that was early on set important to me. The other part of the whole thing is music. Okay. Musica. I see the Led Zeppelin t-shirts. Gotta love the Led Zeppelin. <laughs> no relation to Jimmy Page, just say, <laughs> but other than my grandfather's from England and uh, Jimmy's from England, heaven yeah. forbid. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it is, it is all those things that feed your soul, that feed your life that feed everything. So wine, women and song in my case, um, or wine, humans, friendship, love for humans, life on this planet and song. There's that vibration that comes from music. There's that vibration that comes from food. And there's that vibration when humans get together or entities in, in this world get together and just live. And there's that whole kind of interaction, the Holy Trilogy, as far as I'm concerned. So, nice. keep it rocking. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> how did you decide to go into wine? Um, I got kicked in the head by a donkey, because I think it's insane to do this industry. Um, <coughs> but no. I, think, I, think, I think what it was, no. I mean, I did, I, I was in culinary school, and I, I did an internship at the Wine Spectator, and we'll just leave it at that. But, you know, what I learned from them, what I got exposed to from them, was I go, wow, this is someone's art 
and it's not it's not just their art it is not screwing up what mother nature gives that human being and the yeast and all this other crazy stuff that goes on to making wine and that wine bug bit and then an internship in napa valley and it just uh, here i am nice know, 20, but, but, 22, it, it's 22, 22 years it's later it's interesting that you say art because so you know how many how many bottles of the pop red do you make right now uh we're doing two barrels a year and that's it wow so yeah, yeah. give or take you know 2400 no uh bottles i i do in cases so it's at 50 cases okay so if you take bottle one mm. and the last bottle that you make to make bottle one and the last bottle that you make be so similar in one glass that's art mm -hmm. that's talent well it's also it's also allowing i mean one thing is i think amazing <clears throat> about wine and it's like so my cohorts in napa valley that really bring that or in the wine world let's just say the wine world um, that bring it to heart where it's you see that you're working with Mother Nature so you're trying to reflect Mother Nature as best you can and sometimes she gives you challenges mm -hmm. and sometimes you just like racking your brain and go oh my god how am I going to get through this and you understand technique you understand some of the technology that we have but more so it is more about technique if not how to screw it up screwed up and if mother nature gives you something in a very difficult vintage sit there and going all right i know i need to do this 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 and this and this and this and actually make a damn good wine in what would be called an off vintages i mean you know the big crews in in bordeaux you know mm -hmm. i'm sorry it's like you know We've underst we, we understand Mother Nature and how she works with grapes and yeast and what's happening in, in the air and everything and when you're fermenting. And then being able to take that knowledge and that heart, more particularly, and produce great winemakers, I think, produce damn good wines in off vintages. When Mother Nature's just kicking you in the teeth and just keep, well, not kicking you with teeth, but challenging you to bring out the best in you. And it's just, it's not a war, it's a matter, it's a dance. It's like sometimes it's aggressive and sometimes it's delicate and sometimes it's like making love on the dance floor. And you're trying to get that eventually into the bottle and into your consumer, human race, or whatever you wanna call it. And again, back to the table where we're sitting down You've got someone great in the kitchen, or maybe it's your mama, maybe it's your pops, that's just doing it, friends, and you're getting together, and you are experiencing a moment in time. You're experiencing a moment in time on the, on the, on the table, a moment in time where you, you know a bunch of hearts are getting together, and there's just that vibration that's rocking. That's life, right? Uh, Breaking you know, bread. Yeah. Right? It, it, but That's see, like, it, it really is spot on about the, everything has to come together. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this past year in Ampermer, um, Chateau Margot, which is, you know, one of my favorites. Amen. Right? Amen. The director of wine comes out, and, and I, I, I love it because I cannot actually mimic him. It was a challenging year. But we love challenging years because it forces us to be what we are paid to do. Right. Okay. Incredible winemakers. You know, and, and that goes to say, yes, absolutely. Mother Nature gives you so much rain, so much sun, so much this. The earth gives you so much. At the end, you have a bag with grapes. Are you going to turn it into water? Or are you going to turn it into tears? What are you going to do for me? Hmm. All right. You know? And... Uh, not because he's my friend and, we, and we're celebrating 10 years of, uh, yeah. of, of doing this because ironically it's been 10 years um, over the last 10 years I've, I've personally I've had the pleasure of drinking some of the, the world's great wines and people always ask me the, the simple question you know what's the best bottle of wine you've ever had you know it, it's it's in this industry when they ask you that question the, the proper answer is haven't had it yet we I'll remember that one. I like that one. <laughs> I, like that one. <laughs> Haven't had I used to say it's the last one I had. But. Yeah, <laughs> Haven't had it yet. The honest answer is each one of us has our own preference. Mm -hmm. 
Um, right. I can tell right. you this, that uh, if you go to somebody's house and you look at their wine cellar, you can, they, their wine cellar is a book. It will tell you what their favorite wines are. And if you go to mine, you'll see the prop red. You'll see the stash that you don't see here. You'll see the vine de vein. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you'll see the barrique. And these are wines that, for me, are not incredible. I, def I, de I, you know, I defy someone to come into my house, you know, put a little brown bag over my wine, his wine, and put a brown bag over theirs. We'll open it, we'll pour it in two glasses, and then pick yours. That good. Mm -hmm. Not because he's here. By the way, give him my 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, no cash. <laughs> he, he, you know, he, he, you'll taste it. Taste the pop red. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. To 2010 is. It just takes forever for any of the pop red to um, say hello. It just gets really angry because we start. Remember that I will start blending, and we'll get the first barrel and the second barrel. In 2010, I think was four barrels. That's it. And uh, it's a pain in the ass. We'll go through just so many blends because, you know, the blend's not the same every year. Right. It's a matter of how do we let Mother Nature reign supreme? Even if it was a difficult year, how can we make her just say, all right, I kicked your ass, but you did all right. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, I'm gonna really exude this beautiful thing in a bottle. But at the same time, how do we keep a house style? And I think the house style is that, you know, we do this kind of right bank Bordeaux or Merlot, Cab Franc based things. Mm -hmm. And there's times where we've had Cabernet Sauvignon be king. But there's a house style in a sense of how we make the wine. The three quarter ton fermentations, hand punched but, down one. But tell Mark where where that's driven from because I mean we had this conversation earlier. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, because, why that style? Why do you like that you know, style? You know, uh, the epiphany it was when I was visiting my friend in Saint-Foy, which is on de mer So you got the left bank, right bank, entre de mer <laughs> And I went to um, the right bank because I just found those wines, sorry, a little more fascinating than these. These wines are a little more in your face except for Margot, which is Merlot-driven. Uh, or has the most Merlot out of all the left banks. Right. But the right bank wines just had just that much more complexity and coming from a kitchen mindset of how you can use herbs and spices and whatnot to work with what's happening to the bottle rather than have the bottle dominate or the food dominate. And then I fell in love with the wines when I was sitting in this square of Saint Leon and I said 20 some odd million years ago, it seems 20 years plus ago, what if, what if someone did more of a right bank style? Your Opus ones are more left bank. Mm -hmm. um, I was one of a handful in all of California or the United States way back in the day saying, I'm gonna do this. Going for broke because, you know, pulling off a right bank style where it's been lower cap franc driven was impossible back in the days. I mean, there were other wineries that did it, Right, but it's like all the big names that are doing it now did it way after I did it. I'm not gonna name names or anything, but it's like I was literally only. I mean, you couldn't count on five fingers. I mean, one that was the inspiration was uh, was when I was working for Michael Havens at Havens Wine Cellars, and he did Burrico, which was a you know a Cheval Blanc style blend, but Cheval Blanc and La Pan and Petrus and all those things, you know, from the cooking side of it. Mm -hmm. When I cooked for Christian Moex, he happened to be at a, at a party that I cooked for and was one of the greatest compliments I ever got because, you know, it was not expected. He get called out and he says, that was one of the best quail I ever had in my life. And I'm like, I don't know who he was at first. And then, <laughs> then Jason Palmer, who I was doing this party for, puts his arm around and says, do you know who the hell that was? And I'm going, and I was in, I had a, injury to my leg, so I was just trying to get through the evening. He says, that was Christian Wax from Chacha Petrus. Uh, and so it's, you know, that inspiration is to say, is, is meeting, there's so many different things. It's meeting the humble person who just like, you know, may have no education in wine, whatever like that, and just goes, wow, I really effing love this. Or having 
Heidi Barrett and Bo Barrett come up to you <laughs> and say, and you're trying to get, I'm trying to avoid them, and, and they keep heading towards me, and you say, hey, Brian. Hi. And you kind of go, what is this? We just, we just want to say we really love your wine. And when you have that kind of a thing, and when I talk to Heidi later on in life, I says, I gotta tell you, so you put a huge bump on my step to keep going. I mean, there's amazing people in this industry. There are pains in the ass, arrogant Fs, and mm -hmm. I won't get started because, you know, there's not enough cuss words for it. But at the same time, there's, there's that brilliance, I think, of people that really get it, that really want it, that really understand that of all the beverages, I'm sorry, of all the beverages out there in the, in, 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 on this planet, this thing comes from grapes, reflects this complexity and this art and this culture and all those things. And God, if we can all just sit down at the table, pop a bottle of wine, discuss our concerns and whatever the hell and hopefully work through it and just come to a conclusion that, you know what? Life is about just being and loving, eating food and just, that's life. You mm -hmm. have to eat. You don't necessarily have to drink, but it's I'm moments. sorry. It's moments. Right? It's, it's, it's moments. moments. Right. It's, it's like, <laughs> let's find those moments. You know, I don't care what you believe religious wise. I don't care what it says. Let's just have those moments. I mean, hell, um, it was amazing. So I, my lady friend and I were talking last night. It's like, you know, who would you like to have dinner with? Or you know, who would you like to meet more than anything? For me, it was the, it, for me, it's like the Dalai Lama. It doesn't drink. But just to have that conversation because it's like, let's talk about life and let's mm -hmm. just, let's just be in that moment. Let's be at that table. You know, yeah, you can be vegan. Yeah, you can be vegetarian. Yeah, you can be, I'm gonna eat everything in the kitchen sink. Thank God, you know, foie gras on the planet, whatever, you know, however you want to talk about it. But it's like, let's have conversation. Let's find some peace at the table, man. And yeah, for me, it's gonna involve that as well. It's gonna involve this man, it's gonna involve you now, it's gonna involve that man right over there, and and this just, live it, man, let's live it. Nice. It, and I say a moment, <coughs> I'll tell you the funniest thing, is this is how I found Paige. It's right. A very good friend of mine, uh, Patrick Bang, and so, it's my birthday. I was 36 years old. Comes so up. just yesterday. And you just <laughs> yesterday. Thank you. <laughs> we, we're the same age. We're twenty nine. We're all the same age. You know? <laughs> I, I, I love the fact that I read an article about me that said Mr. Ramos has been in the industry over two decades. I'm like, really? Can you lie? Can you just say a couple of weeks? You know, he said oh, it's a probably more of, like thirty. I've been in the industry for thirty years now. Okay. Yeah, but you started in your teens, teens, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And so Patrick gives me the bottle of this prop red. And he clearly t tells me, he says, you've always been fond of Bordeaux wines. Don't open it yet. Make sure it's a special moment. I know. It so needs I, time, yeah. So I, the irony is I put it in my cellar. A couple years go by, and, and uh, one of my friends turns 50. Comes over to the, to the place where I'm working at, and he says, I'm 50. I'm like, you know what? I've been dying to try this one. I'll be right back. <laughs> and, and he goes, we're we're going to hope it's good, right? He, he goes, what do you mean? I go, this is the irony part. I have something from my personal stash. I'll be right back. Hence the name. Stash. And so I go to the house, come back with this run, and um, pop it open. There's five guys there, and we try it. And I'm literally, there's five guys like this going. Yeah, I'm going to want two or three cases of this. Right. And I'm telling them, I'm like, guys, this is for my stash. Enjoy it. I don't have it. And so I get online and I'm looking for his name. No, you you, you grab the cork. I found it on the you cork. You grab the cork. <laughs> yeah. Found it on the cork. Because this son of a bitch calls me and I was like, hello. <laughs> and so I'm like, can't find it online. And I see the cork and it has a 707. Don't call that number. Uh, and I and I call the number. And he answers it's, the uh, phone. No, that's when the that's when that what well, number was in the cork was like linked to my cell phone at the time. And he answers the phone, yeah. and I go, well, you're like, a oh. bitch. <laughs> I'm later, hi, how you doing? I'm Rick Ramos, you know? And he goes, yeah, how can you? I'm like, you know, so uh, I'm looking for Paige Wise. I'm like, yeah, Brian Page. Hey, how you doing? Next thing you know, he's moving cases. He's moving a pallet from the Lajo to Texas. I'm getting wine in oh, McAllen, right. and 
we get this one. And the true testament to everything that we do, including yourself and myself, is the kind of heart behind it. Mm -hmm. And so we do this wine dinner in McAllen, Texas. No, 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 no. You got to tell the whole thing when I got off the goddamn plane. <laughs> so Jay meets me. So Jay meets me with a friend, one of, one of our really mutual friends. Jay meets me. We'll work for wine. I'm going, where the wine. hell am I? I'm going to McAllen, Texas, of all things. Right. <laughs> Jay, Jay picks me up, has this thing, and brings me to where Rick was working at that time. And I walk in. I mean, I had to have tacos. I had to get some food, so I had tacos next door. And, he t and then Jay takes me into the shop. You greet me at the door. And I walk in, and there are two chiquitas. Really, really cool girls. I mean, women. They're really cool. But they're wearing Kurz Light silver bullet tube tops tube and hot shorts. Mm -hmm. And all I see is jug wine. <laughs> and, I, and I'm sitting there, and, so going, and I'm looking at him, I'm looking at Rick, and I'm going, where the hell are you taking me? And then he takes me into the back room, and I'm going, there's stuff I can't buy in California because it's so allocated, like that bottle up there. But it was amazing. And then we talked for, Jesus Christ, four or five hours. And just start, I start popping corks, and it was just, again, just sat at the well, mm -hmm. bar in this case in the back room, and we just talked about, like, wow, 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 wow. It was, it, it yeah, was one it of was those awesome. It was one of those moments. Yeah. And, right. uh, and, you know, kind of fast forward, and, you know, I, I have a lot of friends that, you know, as you do, as we all do, mm -hmm. they will sit there and drink some wine. And uh, my favorite one is in Mexico City and I had a bottle of the stash which comes back so the, the irony was the stash at the time he made two bottles he made page pop red okay and, and he made the stash yeah. it was under page at the time and <laughs> under page it was under page <laughs> oh no it was under page I thought he said under page <laughs> you, I think we're still all under page no page. I'm totally under page I haven't changed my prices well, well, in how what, long what did I tell you we all work for the Carramente uh, Carramente <laughs> And so, the so, so, <laughs> yeah, so, so, so the stash is, uh, you tell them about the stash. Yeah, tell me The about stash that. was like, oh, Jesus Christ, this is a long story. So the stash was, my brother and I went through all the wines, and we found one barrel and another barrel, consequently, that we thought were just like ridiculous. And it was like one of those things where you go, if I blend this into the bulk of proprietary red, great, but it'll get lost. But these two barrels, those two barrels, those two barrels were ridiculous. Can I say that? Yeah, sure. R ridiculous. So we stashed it away for the family. Now my family can't, and I can't drink 52 cases. Send it to me. We could try. <laughs> Send it to me. We could try, we could try. <coughs> Mark. We're going to have a very good year next year. Yeah, we are. <laughs> but it's like... A case a week. <laughs> what, what, what took it over was uh, I had docs on bikes. You know, doctors on bikes. They, they were on this tour of Napa Valley. And I don't know how they do... I don't know how you tour Napa Valley <laughs> on a bicycle and you hit a winery and hit another winery. You, you just keep I, going. I don't know. Either. I mean, you can get pulled <laughs> over and ticketed for you know, DUI on a bloody bike. It's it's the world nowadays. Well, I saw the signs when I visited last I year. I know, right? Everywhere in California, but Napa especially. You know, you know DWI Limo stuff. Limo drivers. Yeah. Uber. <laughs> D all the above. But then these docs came in, and there was like, you know, a dozen, and their, you know, six, half a dozen and their wives. And... So, and I, and they, they found out about the proprietary red, and then I uh, says, well, you want to try this one thing, crazy thing. So I climb some barrels, and I pull a sample off. This one doctor says, and we, we taste it all, and they're all coming, kind of got that quiet thing like Rick does, yeah. and goes, how much is this? And I jokingly said, I jokingly said at that time, and this was in, uh... Indiana. 2001. 2001? Okay. 2001 was the first one. First finish was 2001. And and, and they look at me and, say, and I go, how much is this? And I go, oh, it's $200 a bottle. Says, I'll take two cases. And I went, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'm just this yo, I'm just young punk. I don't care. But it's something, uh, uh, I can't sell it to you for $200. That's, a, that's ludicrous nowadays. You know? that's just right, amazing. yeah. But it's like, for me, it's like, you know, I ended up selling for $100. We raised it 
nine dollars over the year for the number nine song from the Beatles. Nice. nice. Number nine. Nice. Number nine. Hence so Revolver. 109. Yeah. Hence Revolver. All right. Named after yes. the Beatles Revolver. album, not yeah. after Hey You Texans, not after a gun. I just after. want to know that I own the vinyl. I have the vinyl. You have, have the vinyl. Two. Yeah. <laughs> two. I have an English version and I have a oh, oh, you got me nice. there. Come on, baby. You know me. But I'll tell you the funny story about the stash. He's gonna so tell us anyways. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna punk you on the stash. Uh, so, oh no! So I'm in Mexico City and, and I'm in this tasting, and I kind of recognize the guy, don't recognize the guy, but then somebody tells me he's one of your clients. Okay, so we go there, and I get my phone, and I gotta get send. I still have to send you that picture. So this guy comes over, grabs the bottle, pours himself some stash. How much? You know, que tanto? And they go, try it. Que tanto? And then I go, right. how many cases do you want? And the salesman in me comes, comes out. Right, yeah. He goes, I want at least 10 cases. I go, there's six packs. 20 cases. I might get you five. And he looks at me and he says, I'll take the five. That was, I think, what, a year before he became president, Felipe Calderon? <laughs> right? Nice. And so, and so kind of cool. Kind of cool little story behind it. But I think the coolest story is not that he bought it or that this guy bought it or this guy bought it. Is I think in what I do for a living and what we do for a living, you want to find that very homebody, that very personable person, that very, that person that has that kind of heart to and passion to what he's doing. And I remember that very first wine dinner, this will be my fourth Bistro. wine dinner. Bistro. Bistro, Bistro M. Bistro and Marcel's place. Okay. And, and we, Marcel. did a, we did a fundraiser for we people. We did a fundraiser. Did a, did and a fundraiser. So, and so at the time, you know, when we're doing it, a lot of things were coming my way. And I come to Brian and I tell Brian, I'm like, hey, you know, so, little situation, you know, we're going to do a little fundraiser. And this is a guy that is just starting out. We're talking 10 years ago, he's just starting out. And he says, I'll let you have a magnum of this, I'll have you this. And I'm like, really? Yeah. He well, gives me I went this. nuts. No, because, you know, because, well, you know, it was like, for me, if, we're, if it's the right fundraiser, if it's the right thing, and, you know, he hit, he hit every single chord. Mm -hmm. It's like it's for people that need money. money. We and raised twenty seven thousand dollars in a wine dinner. Oh, that's awesome, right? And, that was and just I'm this little punk ass son of a bitch back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not. I'm this punk ass son of a bitch back in the day, and I'm just going. All right, no, we we can work with each other because we get it. It's like you know, we it's like we can do this. We're gonna sell to. Yes. The Presidente, and then Toros, you know, you know, who's got the the cachet, but at the same time, it's like, let's do something good. Yes. And, and, and so we, we do this thing, and I remember at the end of the night, and next day I'm looking at the pictures that we took. There's this really cool picture that's arguably one of my favorite pictures, and actually, I'm going to look for it today, and, and, and I'm going to just make sure I sit and get your coffee. We're going to hold each other and cry. You, Jay, and I are walking to B Store oh, M. Great, right? We literally look like the usual suspects. <laughs> we should be arrested. That's we how we should have been arrested. Yeah, we <laughs> we're walking away. <laughs> and somebody caught the picture like in a slow motion walk. <coughs> and from the back of us, and you see, you know, the, 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 the sign, and you see underneath Page Wine Dinner. And the three of us walking, we literally looked like, okay. Which one of you committed the crime? Oh, I know. We've all been deported to where we have no clue because we're all, we are all born in the United States. But it's like a, we were, I don't know how we're going to do it. We're going to deport you, deport motherfucks. You. Oh, excuse my friend. <laughs> I might can bleep it out. I'll just put the explicit tag on. <laughs> but here, here's, my t here, here's my personal take on, on, on all the wines from Page. Uh, as you can, you can make this comment as well. We've been very blessed to have tried some of the world's great wines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, for me, as, as a restaurant owner and as a wine shop owner, um, I've never not had a wine shop or been a wine bar where I have never not bought pitch. So when I opened up Palaveticos, um, 
there, there was a lot of pressure with it because, and, and, and it, I, ironically, when I was opening up, I always remember this friend of mine, Jer, uh, Jared, and uh, he said, I was in the middle of doing the wine list for the, for the, the, the shop, and he goes, that's got to be so cool. And I'm like, what? Like, to be able to, to like, pick your own wine for your own wine shop with nobody telling you no, I literally stopped. For two months, I did not pick another wine for that, for that seller. And somebody asked me, how come you're not done? I'm like, dude, Jared said that, you know, you could pick your own wine. I'm like, and? Before I could blame this guy, I could blame right. this guy, because they were the ones that signed the checks. I can't blame anybody for the wine mm -hmm. that's in Alberico Fine Wine. Yeah. I can only blame myself. There's no blame, and, 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 it's, and so I was kind of a little nervous, and I stopped. And then I looked at what I had. And I remember, I saw. And, and, I and I remember saw. thinking to myself, you know, I have insignia, but I also have paid stash. Right. You know, I have opus, but you know what? You know, not to use the vocabulary, but the F you part of it. Yeah, I got the prop red. F you. Yeah. F you. <laughs> but you also have my favorite up there, Unico. <laughs> I, have, I have Unico, but I have Vine de Vain. Amen to that. And you know, and so. That's, that's to you, <laughs> Mr. Mike Dern. Mike Dern. Vine de <laughs> And so this is kind of cool. So this is, hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll introduce him, introduce him and then let him tell you. So this is a project that Brian did with Mike Dern from uh, Green Day. Yeah, the bass guitarist. Yeah. Okay. And so we got it in. And so we did the Swine Dinner in Callan. And so... It was gone. <laughs> it was just it was, gone. It was actually, it was, it was for him, but the, the, flight, the flight from hell. Oh, so he he flies. Dude, through, he better flies, than today's. Or, oh, today's worse. flight was better, right? What? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I got to take a nap and got tequila. <laughs> this was off yeah. the plane. <laughs> I was a haggard wreck. No, no, haggard <laughs> wreck. wreck. But you have Guinness on tap. Ed. I, at the yeah. time, she has nice. Guinness, Guinness, Guinness on tap. I was like, I, 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 I get up. It's like, I'm changing. I'm in my underwear, <laughs> changing in the parking lot. Cars driving, man. I'm so wiped out and not caring. I'm just he, changing. He, he flies in from Frisco to Houston, and some Is it genius. Frisco, Texas, or Fris Frisco? San Francisco? Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, you know, Houston, Houston, like, okay, Frisco, Texas. Like and, okay. so, and some guy walks into the Houston airport, pulls out a gun, and commits suicide. Oh my goodness. Yeah. They delay his flight to McAllen for wine dinner that starts at 7:30. And there he said, he said to me this, or something he like said that. this takes at six. Hey, FYI. I'm delayed. Some jackass. Just, sorry. Just <laughs> tried to just, try to try to get through security, <laughs> and they got him. Off himself. And I'm like, nice. But he gets there, you know. And meanwhile, <laughs> we have all these wines on top of the counter. And I have this client of mine, and I love him. He's a good doctor. And you oh know, my God, the doctor. He, he, the doctor. He comes <laughs> over and he just goes, "What's what the hell <laughs> is that with that heart?" Yeah. And they go, "You know." <laughs> I tell him, "I haven't tried it." He says, "What do you mean?" That's a barrel sound. This is what do you mean it's a barrel sample? He literally, like, he literally grabbed it from the barrel yesterday and he put it in the vine. He says, I know what a barrel sample is. I go, will you ask? I'm trying to explain it. So he <laughs> grabs it. a glass and all of this, and I poured him about this much. Oh, yeah, right? And he goes like this. I was changing the parking lot. Just so and you know. at that point, he's saying, I'm like he, in my underwear. Did I tell you this yet? <laughs> and the doctor goes like this. How much? <laughs> and how much that, 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 that was the first one. Then he goes the second one. He goes, "Can you pour a little bit more?" You haven't tried it, Doc. I don't need to. <laughs> and I go, Doc, that's all I'm giving you until dinner. Doesn't suck. And so then he takes a sip and he all goes, <laughs> reaches out into the wallet, takes out, takes out a credit card, and he goes, "I want, I want what you have." And I go, well, you can't have what I have because it's a barrel sample, but I will make you a deal. <laughs> At $1,000 a bottle, whatever I get in, you can have. I'm gonna give you a 10% discount. <laughs> and he looks at me, and at this point, I have no clue what it's gonna cost me. Right. When he made this comment, he goes, swipe it. I went, crap. <laughs> <laughs> And that's where he and I are the same. It was like, I can't charge him. I can't charge him that much. I can't charge him. Although, Although that doctor. We, we almost came really close. Did he impress you? He's, he's, <laughs> he's been a great supporter <laughs> Support ever since. Ever since. Very nice. Leave it at that, right? Very nice. 
<laughs> well, so we have a simple question for you. It's for me. For you. I don't get interviewed very often. We're, so we're, we're going to interview you. Okay. Okay. You've had it. Yeah. What do you think? I love it. Right. Wow. And, and, well, I have a very special place in my heart for Merlot-based wines. Okay. This one? No, I haven't had this. You yes. had that. I haven't had this. I've had, had that. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So as far as this, um, I love Merlot. Okay. And this is mainly Cabernet Franc, just so you know, baby. Yeah. And I, in my visit to San Emiliano, that was one of my favorite visits. Right. Chateau Von Roque. Ooh. Yes, the other Moix, Alan. <laughs> not trying to name drop it. Right, 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 right. I also did not know who he really was when I met him and interviewed him and tasted his wine. But that's what's great about that was the a best lot of part. things is, is, is they're just chill. Yeah, I'm they not were. trying to be like stereotypic or anything, but it's like, it's like, it's like you go, yeah, when I met Chris Young, I was like, oh, whatever the hell, and, you know, I'm flying on Blue Blue Clove and biking in because my legs all, right. I, my tore up my leg, don't ask, it's a long story. But it's like, it was just it, gentleman. Mm-hmm. When I met the Baroness Rothschild, gentle, gentlewoman, right. just, just, and just like, woo, dude, she's wearing a four pocket Chanel classic, you know, below the knee because above the knee is gauche, as Coco would say. But it's like amazing mm-hmm. woman, amazing human being. She's worth, you know, right. and then some, and yet just so, I'm just a bloody chef. Cook, as far as I'm concerned, and here I have the Baroness Rothschild. Yeah, I imagine the same experience you had. Oh, yeah. so you would never know. Yeah, he was one of the There's people. There's something I met about that the wine industry. No clue. Of people who were actually involved, not right. millionaires, whatever the hell come to the, you know, try to do whatever the hell they want. Not the same thing. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, so he, he was. He, he, he was it, I had. They had, uh, I got there in the morning. Mm-hmm. We did the tour of the, of the right, area. Right. Did, went to the vineyards. He showed me where his sister's, sister's place is, you know, who makes wine on top of the hill. <coughs> We're done. He goes, We're going to have lunch. We'd like to join us. So it's harvest time, which is also very difficult to talk to anyone for anywhere, but I got to talk to him in harvest time. It's impossible. Time. And yeah. uh, had, had lunch with, with him, the, all the, two long tables in this, in this big, in this big uh, hall. And all the harvesters were on one table, and everybody in the family. He had some other people that have been coming there. These traders that came from Hong Kong have been coming for like 20, 30 years. You know, well before the Chinese were getting into Bordeaux, right? Right. Like these are personal well, Hong friends. Hong another world. <coughs> personal friends of his, right? Uh-huh. And they come every year. And they're in it. Yeah. They're doing it. And we're, we're they're not. No, they're we're drinking, we're drinking his wine yeah. and his sister's wine, and we're having a great lunch. But it's everyone's awesome. in it. Yeah. It's, it's, they're not on the sidelines going blah, 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 blah. Exactly. they're like they're mm-hmm. sorting they're doing this and that and the oh, other yeah. you know they're either in the kitchen helping cook or they're out there making it happen absolutely and that's the cool stuff yeah. I almost said the S word H word <laughs> that's the cool shit here, here, here's you know the, the, I think to me is you know you ask you, you, you kind of ask yourself what do you look for in a wine you know what do you expect in a wine and we, I have a different perspective. Brian has one. You have one too. I think what's really interesting to me, as as my career evolves in this industry, is that there is no is there's no sidestepping. It's there's not a bad wine there. If you look at it the way I look at it, there was a wine that was created from this. But you get to a certain level where you you realize that. This is a little bit different than this. Mm-hmm. This is a lot different than this. We were having a conversation earlier, uh, and um, just for the for the record, because I want to be very clear about this, before we had our first tequila shot. It it's was. true. It was very true. Very true. And, I had a nap. And, That's and, good. And the comment was about, you know, Cab Franc. Mm-hmm. And so, I like Cab Franc. To me, that's that's king. And, and we know friends well, that make... Cab Franc comes from Sauvignon Blanc, Blanc. and Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc. Right. And, and so... It's true. It, 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 it's just one of the... I love that. And there's some people in Napa that make really good mm-hmm. wines. And I was telling him, I'm like, uh, mm. you know, there, there's, there's... You know, and I'm going to give them their names because they deserve it. You know, Frank Altamira makes a great Cab Franc. Mm-hmm. It makes an incredible... Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Raymond, uh, right? He makes a great cat frog. Even Langerine, for that matter, makes a great cat frog. Right. However, 
Furioso. Furioso. It's not that because he's here, because if he wasn't here, if it was just you and I, I would put all four mm -hmm. and put them in a bag and let you pick. In, in other, I, I like to gamble. I'm the genius that gambles on the flip of the coin at the Super Bowl. <laughs> you know? I could tell you that you would probably pick this. And so we will do this in a very European manner. Let you so Furioso is a project that we did out of the earthquake. This is actual seismograph from the earthquake. Uh, we lost a lot. And this is some of the stuff that survived. And uh, it's oh, very, very dear nice. to my heart. Completely sold out, sorry. 61 case production. I, <coughs> that's it. I got two cases. See. If you look at it from the, the standpoint of an earth, here in San Antonio, te Texas, two cases made. No one could have said. Here, fish anyways. But um, yeah, it's it's very precious. It's what survived. We had two projects that survived. Uh, the 2012, uh, three actually. Proprietary Red. Uh, proprietary Red. Premier Barrique, which is this little guy right here, which okay. is stunning. And then Furioso, which Remember is a play. Cap Franc, correct? Was, yes, which right. is a play off of The Fury. But Furioso <coughs> also brings some musical elements to it because to play with passion, to play with fury. Okay. So, but this is the things that survived. And uh, again, 61 case production, 6.1, arguably between 6.0 and 6.1. Initial reports was 6.1. That's when we started working on this label. But. You want some? I have none. He has some. It's mm. gone. Sorry, guys. Love you. But get the Fury. We have a good chunk of that. But Premier Barrique, this is almost gone. 11 cases remain. I, I, it's kind of like, like on this. But this is, so on, I, this is on steroids and bigger structure. So I have on but this, I, I got uh, two three packs. And then I got uh, two 1.5s, uh, two three liters, and one six liter. Yeah. Now you got three, 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 three liters. Well, the other ones are in Macallan. Jesus Christ. The other ones are in Macallan. I'll be honest, I like this better than the proprietary red. I like this. I love Cap Franc too, by the way. This is. <laughs> well, this is 2010. This is 2012. But this and, is, this and, is and, amazing. And, and to me, this, and, and, yeah, I guess. It, and, I think it's but, more complex than that. Than that, correct. This is, this is more in your face. But the reality <laughs> is, is that they're just totally different. World, so I think that's what it is. This what is do you want yeah, to play? definitely more in your what, face. What, what do you want to play? And that's probably what it is. It's, it's overshadowing the complexity, but there's still complexity, yeah, yeah, but not like that. No, that that I mean, is this is good. This is real good. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like going, yeah, no, I'd be like, mm -hmm. give me more. But the thing about it is, and this is the one thing in this day and age, you have so many little wineries and, and some boutique wineries that are producing these. Are these great, you know, they have this great bottle, this, this, but it's such a small production thing. Yes, yeah, 61 and, cases. And, you know, mm -hmm. when you look at, it, you know, what's your total case production as a winery? Yeah. What's your total case production? 2,000, we're trying to get to four. 2,000. It's not much. Yeah. That's not but a everything lot. by hand. And it, right. it, as it, much it, as we it, can it, do by hand. If you think about it, 2,000 cases, if you divide it by. The states? Yeah, it's not that much. It's to go it is, it, no, but most of it's sold the taste room, mm -hmm. and it's like whatever this guy. So no, I'll, I'll call up Rick during bottling, and like when we're doing this, which is forty-two cases, I'm calling Rick and saying, "What what large formats do you want?" I'm not kidding. What large formats do you want? And I'm sitting there on the bottling line holding that bastard up. <laughs> It's getting heavy. I mean, especially that one up there. He's got, he's, got, he's got a six liter where he's going, Oh man, yeah. I'll take this, 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 this. Okay. And it, it is done. No, it's <laughs> done right in there. Right then and there. That's true. I, I'm literally in Mexico City when he calls me. And no, like, it's true. It's, it's, it's so true. It's like, hey, you know, how many, I'm, I'm bottling how many of these you need. And to me, it, it, it really lends. That's not you know, customer service. That's love. That's love. That's love. You, you, you think about, you know, that whole question of, you know, I mean the bottle. What, Which one? This that one? one, yeah. Okay. Or either one. Either of one. It's like, matter. what's more romantic, the twist off or right. the cork? You know what's what's more romantic is when I can tell, open this bottle of wine and tell somebody, you know what, <laughs> the guy that makes this wine drinks Maker's Mark, loves tequila, 
and you know loves the Beatles, which you know that kind of works for me. And loves Zeppelin. And um, loves Johnny Cash. Zeppelin, Johnny Cash. You know, is probably the only poor person that would still be traveling the world if the, the Grateful Dead was still, was still alive and touring. Sort of. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Les Zeppelin, yeah. Yes. <laughs> but the romance in what you open is not what you open, it's who you open it with. Mm-hmm. And I've been very fortunate that, you know, with Brian's wine, uh, I, I can tell you that I've bought a ton of cases what was that and te- we sold all of it. <laughs> what was that tequila at your kitchen table? The and, and, and so oh, it, it, goes, shit. it goes to these things. This Girl. is how unique things are. So the last time he was in McCallum, he's a tequila guy. I'm a tequila guy. And so. No, it was the last time, it was time before. No, it was the last that, time too. That's it. Oh, sorry. And so. so the last few times. <laughs> so the guy that used to make it, Aruba Tequila, he retired and went on and made his own stuff, personal stuff. And so he gave it a name H1. Okay. H to honor at Aduna. One, because it was the first time he did it. Brian comes in, we go to my house, I open H5. And we try it, and I, and I tell him, I didn't tell him it was tequila, I said, try this. Oh, that's right. It was smooth like a scotch, elegant. Single malt. Like, elegant like a single malt. And go. then he just goes, What is it? He goes, Tequila, he says, it's fucking A. <laughs> And and so it's those moments when you can when you when you can taste a wine. You know, it's like when he told me about these, you know, he's got my friend it's it's called Mortal Divine and Love and Lament. And I'm like, what's I went like this, time Time out, out. time out, you know, threw a flag, it said 15 year penalty on Brian Page, because you know, I was first to market on the on page prop red and stash. What the heck is the white wine? So I started reading up on it. I read the names on it, and I'm like, gotta love Brian. Love and lament, you know. And a cigar I'm. ban. I don't smoke cigars anymore, but it's like, what it took to make that. So my Bridget, kicking ass, amazing kid. And what's amazing, her husband's name is Emilian. Oh, nice. Which is the Romanific word for San Leon. <laughs> so it's like, you know, we have this tie, which is really crazy, but she and I work on our labels together. This, this we did together. This, I mean, you go down the list. This is the only one we didn't do together, but Bridget and I did that thing, but Bridget, they, she kicked ass on those noise. And everything we had to do to make this happen was groundbreaking at the label place we went to. Yeah, but I mean, even this, I mean, tell them about who designed this. That was a, my brother's roommate, my brother and his roommate, and his roommate escaped from Poland back in the day when there's persecution and just somehow via Europe and whatever the hell, somehow got to the United States. And that's what he did. So it's a modern Gothic interpretation of our family crest. The three doves, we have three mm-hmm. doves in our family crest as one. Uh, three brothers as one. And yeah, we have crazy stories. We got a new redesign of this we're not gonna talk about, which is Sick Monkey uh, for the page label, which is, it's ridiculous. But um, it's, 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 it's a pain in the ass to make, but I, I love it. And, and here's the, and I guess I'll tell you this, because you, you and I are in the same boat. We try so many wines, Andy. Mm-hmm. So many wines. First time trying them? Yeah. What's your initial gut reaction to what you've tried versus what you've tried? Because I mean, I, I write notes. I write notes on everything I try. And you know, and between on premiere and everything else I do, you know, last year I probably sampled four, five thousand different wines. Mm-hmm. And so that's a lot of wines. And, right. And, and so that requires a, 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 a an elephant memory per se. <laughs> To remember this. <laughs> and, and, and liver tenacity. And, and liver tenacity. <laughs> I, you know what? My, my mother says the best. You know, I love that my son is a professional alcoholic with a title. Love that. Uh, but it requires a lot. And, and so for me, I think of the wines I've had that I've loved. Um, you know, the 2003 stash for me yeah. is in my top 10 wines mm. I've ever had. 
And so, not because he's right, here, brother. but I'll, I'll give you one. The 96 Romani Conti Latash. Mm -hmm. Right? That was so good. Right? This is solid. Number two. Didn't suck. Number two, as much as I hate to admit this, yeah, the 99 Screaming Eagle was pretty solid. <laughs> it was pretty good. I found, yeah, I found the 98 better than the 99. I, well, I haven't had the 98. All right, sorry. I've had the 99. You. Number three Heidi, was the 2004 you. Catena Zapata. Ooh. Number four was the 1995 Margot. Number five, number five was the 2003 Stash. That's why we get along. I've written forget article, the, forget, I've written forget, articles. Forget about the stash, this. though. But you know, it, it's interesting, though. It's like that's our nice. taste. In, it, it's it's not about our taste. I, I think it's a, everything you mentioned, though, brother, is what goes behind those wines. Though we're not people no. in a corporation. There's like a human beings that actually are involved, and they take truth to what they're trying to accomplish. Too. Screaming Eagle went through the roof and all this insanity. And it's like, I've been fortunate to taste Screaming Eagle also, but also be complimented by Harry, you know, Heidi Barrett. But it was, it's just more than that. She has a spark. Bo has a spark. Bo Barrett has a spark. And you find those sparks. And I think you see that, like I see it, and I think you see it, my brother, mm -hmm. is you see that spark and that creativity and knowing when to intervene and when to sit back and let Mother Nature do her thing. Be, and, and, and I'll say it this way, because I'm, I'm a big Beatles fan myself. Right, brother. John Lennon made this quote. He goes, today is the day that something will enlighten my life. Okay. Quote, unquote. Later that day, five hours later, he wrote, imagine. Incredible song. Right. But it, it, it's just what led him to that. What happened in those mm -hmm. five hours after he made that statement? Right. And that statement was made in an interview. And then he wrote that. So, you know, so that, that's kind of really cool. When, you know, when I saw Brian using Revolver, I thought, that is so cool. Because remember, remember that kid that came and sang yeah, that one did, dinner? That, we, Man, you know, we, brother? We, we, we had a, a wine dinner and uh, um, Santa Fe Steakhouse. Santa Fe Steakhouse. And Catina. Yeah. And, uh, oh, the band is, uh, they're from Austin. It is... It was a kid. It was a lead singer. And, um, oh, yeah. oh, my Lord, I'm going to forget. But he, did, he actually has a side gig that he does with Robert Rodriguez, the actor. Okay. The director. Director, yeah. It's called, director, yeah. It's called Chingon. Chingon. <laughs> uh, but what is the name of the band? The band is called... We should call Isaac. He would know. know. Let's call him. Yeah, Isaac would know. You know? And I'm gonna call him just No no no, no. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm gonna call him I'm gonna call him live. <laughs> he's trying to get he's trying to get through an interview, <laughs> man. But, no, <laughs> but, but, but it was just one of those things where the lead singer would happen to walk into the restaurant while right. he's doing a wine dinner. No, but remember the kid though. Yes. Remember that uh, what was his name? I can't think of his name, but he came in. And we had the whole dinner Please. party, just like the whole winemaker dinner singing. <laughs> it was just like it was insane. Oh, nice, very nice. And it's Imagine just, those it are moments. ridiculous. And I'm, going, and I'm like, I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm like, you know, yeah. I'm doing it's like I don't cry. Boom, and I'm going. Uh, just moment. It was, it was that moment. It was it's that like, moment. It, it's kind of like you know, my father doesn't drink wine. My father went, you know, we were talking about Marty Corson earlier. Martin, yeah. So, my father Martin. doesn't drink wine. The first wine festival I do, my father shows up. And, you know, I give him a bottle of wine. I give him a <laughs> glass of wine. My dad has this glass of wine. And I'll always remember, Dad, he just goes, This is really good. And you know, mijo, doctors say that wine's good for the heart. I go, red wine, Dad. That's a white wine. <laughs> no, white wine it, too now. And, and then he goes... But this is really good. If it helps a little bit, I'm going to take this. So my dad, dad drinks this wine. To this day, dad doesn't drink red wine. He drinks white wine, and which is fine, you know. And but what was really interesting was my father had never drank anything outside of Michelob Ultra. Who? 
Michelob Ultra. Oh my god. And now, <laughs> now it's like his son has to deliver white wine at least once a month. You know. He'll dig that nice. I'm about to. I'm yeah. about to because, <laughs> I, I, ironically, the nice. Sauvignon Blanc is what he likes. No, but he'll dig that nice. Better take some pictures. <laughs> pictures. If you're a little clicking in the background, we got we got a photographer coming in. Yeah, because <laughs> for some reason they think we're cool. Well, maybe they are. At least we share this. I'm just I'm just here for the ride. We're, this we're, has been a great ride yeah, so far. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, you know, if it's been a great ride so far. <laughs> you know what? This is cool. Right here. Does it even look like Liam Neeson? Well, he does. Like you a Russian really version. Like camera. Does it even look like you saw him in the background? He's probably got tattoos from here. He does. Absolutely. He, he might says, he's a, is he going to be on the phone later telling he, me, you he, know, he's going to grab the phone and he goes, <laughs> his special skills? He's going to say, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. <laughs> oh, my right. goodness. Um, well, this, uh, there's so many things we, we could talk about. Um, I know, right? But I, I, I want to talk a little bit with, with you, Rick. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So you started McAllen with this, mm -hmm. and now we're in San Antonio. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and we had lunch a few months ago, and we right. kind of talked about it. I mean, I read the story, but I got to talk with you a little bit, bit about your philosophy on, on how you operate this as a business. Um, and I think one of the things that was really interesting is how you price your wines. So can you... Tell us what your philosophy is on this. Yeah, tell us quickly, dude. Because I think it's, I think it's great. I, I think, well, you know, I'm that guy that when I go to dinner with my friends, they always give me the wine list. Right. Yeah. I always get the wine book, and I'm sitting there, <coughs> and I'm going through it. And I'm going through it. The reason I go through a wine book, and just so that everybody knows, every wine book has a mistake. It does. And as a buyer, <laughs> as a guy that's a buyer, I gotta find the mistake. No, it's a treasure. It's a treasure. It's a treasure. 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 Right. Right. It's a treasure hunt. And Not so, a mistake. It's like, oh, whoops! I'll take I four of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And so my, my favorite one was several years ago, or a couple years ago. My friends and I take a golf trip, and we're we're no. at, we're at this unknown steakhouse because I'm going to protect the girl that actually is the master song there, and I don't want her to get fired. But I'm going through this list, and I tell my friends, you know, guys, and I'm like this because you know when I was younger I could read without glasses. And now I got to put the <laughs> And I did one of these. <laughs> Next thing I'm like, you know, y'all pay for dinner. I got wine. And my friends know me well enough to know to, that they said, "Just shut yeah, up." Yeah, no, no, we're gonna split this. <laughs> because so the, the wine fucking be so cheaper the guy, than the, the dinner. The guy comes <laughs> over and he says, "Can I help you?" And I go, "Yeah, I'm going to have the Romani Conti Saint Devant." And so this waiter, he stands up. I literally thought that he had injected himself with Viagra because he just like, I hope I can say that. He just like stood, stand still, <laughs> runs to the back, comes back and he does one of these, here's my Romani Conte Saint Vivant. Right, yeah. And my friends are like, okay, tell us a little bit. And so the guy does this and, and he leans it over like that. I'm like, please don't do that. Don't, don't, don't. And he breaks the bot. What? And, um, and he looks at me and like, it's a 20 year old bottle. What do you expect? Stand it straight up, put the pressure down, not yeah. angle. But can you give me a coffee filter and a decanter? And my friends start laughing, and like, really, Rick? And I'm like, dude, yeah. I can protect this bottle. I got this. Yeah, yeah this right. Before. They bring me <laughs> the decanter, I get the coffee filter, I open the bottle, pour it, and then they're like, that good? I'm like, you have no idea. And so right. then they pour it, and then all of a sudden I hear this booming voice. And so this master psalm was a very dear friend of mine, and I'm gonna keep the genders the gender safe. And I hear the voice like, mistake in the wine list, just a little bit. Excuse me, sir, the kid that was still on Viagra, I go, can you go back and get me the 1985 Chateau Lafitte? And I just hear the, ugh. Oh. The kid goes, brings the bottle of Lafitte. I literally grab the wine menu and I sit on it because I'll be damned if they're going to charge me the actual price for the two bottles that I found. Go in the back and reprint it real quick. No, this is the price. This is the price on it. I'm sticking to that. <laughs> and so the, this master song says, we're good friends. And it's like, how bad? And I'm like, this bad. The mistake in that wine menu was the Romani Conti Saint Vivant was $450, not $4,500. Yeah. The uh, 1985 Lafitte was, 90, uh, 85 Lafitte was, um, 
and seven hundred and fifty dollars, not seven thousand five hundred. <laughs> So note to self, the way I designed this was, there's no mistakes in my wine menu, because I don't have one. You can walk into the wine room, pick your bottle of wine, and my guys, after they check in the computer, will give you a price <laughs> so that I don't make those mistakes. Or make a call. <laughs> and make a call. But no, I mean, I think honestly. No, no, no. <laughs> I wanted to create two things. I've been very fortunate in, in, in the two decades, as the guy said, that I've been in this industry. And I've traveled and I've been to some really good restaurants. Yeah, but you have it down pat in Bordeaux, brother. No, you have it, you're one of the few in the world. I, I'm just saying, um, come on, brother. I am a CIVB Thank cer you. certified Bordeaux educator. See, I'll bring that out of you, bitch. And so that's that's, <laughs> that's kind of cool. No, it's really and, cool. <laughs> and so, you know, and, and so, but I've, I have traveled and I've been to some really good restaurants and every time I would come home, I couldn't describe to my friends how good the dish was. Right. So a long time ago, I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna walk into the kitchen. And I have no, sh there's no shame in my game. I literally had a dish, walked in there. How you doing, Rick Ramos? How did you make the Osabuco? Scott, uh, uh, Healdsburg, the Zinbar. And he just goes, well, we right. did this, this, right, right. this, this. Cool, wrote it down. That was the first dish. That was 15 years ago. And I just started collecting them. And when I decided to do this, there's that old saying, you know, I have a very dear friend of mine. She always tells me, how do you define your restaurant? What makes you different than everybody else? I'm like, I don't mind. And she says, what do you mean? I go, you cannot tell me that if you go to this restaurant and they say that, that their sea bass is this, they didn't invent it. The chef happened to be at this restaurant, really liked it, and kind of reincarnated that dish with his own little twist. Mm -hmm. He added a pinch of salt. I don't care what he did, but he's calling it his own. Me? No. My sea, my, my sea bass is from the bricks in Interlomas in Mexico City. That's where we got the dish from. My Osobuco is from the Zin Bar in Healdsburg on the square. You know, my, my, my dishes, we give credit to where we got them from. Mm -hmm. That's how we do our menu. But the Tosh wine does kick some ass. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I'm just saying, <laughs> brother. I'm just he saying. Does. He's good. He's my brother, man. And he's I dig that motherfucker. And, <laughs> and but when we get to the wine side of it, is I got to a point where wouldn't it be really cool that you could go into a place, go to the shelf, and say, okay, I want the page prop red. I'm gonna tell you guys, this in a restaurant is about 200 bones. Yeah. Oh, right. I think it's 80 bucks here. Yeah. You know? Wouldn't it be really cool to go to a restaurant and order a bottle of wine for what it actually is? And enjoy a great bottle of wine and then enjoy a great meal. And, and, and to really think that you're not, you, you know, I, I think that's one of the things we've tried so hard is that when you're sitting having dinner with us and you're having this wine for that price and you're having this meal in one split second you make this comment shit i <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it's okay Sorry. we're good we're good it's like wow i forgot that i was in san antonio yeah or wow I or forgot anywhere I, right or i forgot i was in macau no, no or no let's take it further Hell yeah, I'm in San Antonio, and I can get that experience here. here. Right, and, and so, right, and, 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 and absolutely. And then when the bill comes, you know, you look at the tap and you're like, yeah, I robbed this boy blind. And that's my mentality. If you can leave my place and actually feel that you robbed me, we've, we've done our job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? I mean, I think, you know, be, being in the industry as long as I have and, and how, how things are priced in our industry, um, and talking with you, uh, when we, besides reading the article, actually talking with you that, that day at lunch and, and the pricing, you know, the fact is you, you make it work. You obviously make it work. You, you did it in McAllen. You did it for a number of years there. And now you're up here. So it's not like, you know, somebody had this crazy idea and said, I'm going to do this. And then six months later, they're out of business because it couldn't be profitable. You know, they, could, they couldn't earn enough money to keep the business going. So <clears throat> to me, it's, it's refreshing that you're able to do that um, and do stuff that the restaurant industry <clears throat> doesn't do. Right? And I know that in my years, people blame the hotels as the 
the quote four time markup of of wine, <laughs> you know, and, and, and the it, restaurant's going to fall it's, suit. It's, it's, <coughs> I have a friend of mine, and she says the best, and she goes, you have created something that's not out there. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not that I want to be the first person or, or that person. It's just that I think, and, 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 and God love my sister. My sister loves to go out and have a good night, have good dinner, have a good bottle of wine. But unfortunately, she doesn't have the means to be able to afford some of the luxuries that I've been able to, mm-hmm. or, or us. And so I decided I'm gonna create something that she can every night, right? Monday through Sunday. She can go have that experience. She can go out and have X and X and X. And I, and I, and I, I could easily say names and you guys know that, but I won't because X, X and X has worked really hard to build what they have. Mm-hmm. And I'm working to where I want to give back to these people the experiences I've I've enjoyed. You know, that's why my wine list is very eclectic. Right. You know, when people walk into this wine room, but it's I mean, killer. You know, you just it, you know, I go goo goo. And it's like that's because you don't have someone to tell you you need this, you need no, this, you need what, to what, price it this what's way. What's great about you, Rick, though, what's great about you and this experience and with Callan and San Antonio is that you surround yourself with amazing killer people that see that. I mean, it's so hard to find cool people, Tosh, the whole kit and caboodle that get it. Man, and it's it's hard. I know your grief to find those it's, it, killer it's people. Hard. It, it and it's is. like, you know, it's like I've been blessed hanging with you for ten years now. It's like and you've been blessed with some really amazing people. Me. And you know what? You're a blessing when it comes to goddamn this motherfucking wine <laughs> and food experience, right? You know, for the record, Shut this up. is a rated R show. <laughs> you know. No, but you know, it's Rick, not so on Max. It's so I mean, that's gonna gonna be my second ever explicit tag in iTunes. No, but, but, but it's, I, <laughs> I, I, will, I will tell you this. I mean, so that so you understand my chef. Yeah. So so Tomoshi, my executive chef. Right. Let's talk about the menu real quick. And oh, so, yeah. Jesus Christ! Yeah. And so, so, I'm looking out forward so we to it. And so I'm going to put I'm my so dad's grateful. glasses on for the record. That's fine with me. So Mr. Alberico wears these glasses, Dad. Dad, Dad. Okay, Dad. dad tell me about your. Tell me about the food tonight. So. Um, so tonight, you know, our first course is a grilled chicken hearts. Amuse bouche. Okay. So, and so we're going to pair it with the Mortal Divine Shin and Lock. Now, here's the messed up part about that. I drank the wine, I drank four glasses to make sure that the spices were correct according to the pairing. So you drank a bottle? At two pounds. <laughs> uh, the second course is a roasted pepper and tomato soup. That's with the Love and Lament. Tomato soup. Simeon. Very rare. Simeon. Very rare. And 61 I'm, I'm cases. By, we have two white wines with. Wines that I'm going to assume would Dishes, normally yeah. be red, red wine pairings. Right? Very good. Very so good. I'm, I'm, I'm really intrigued uh, with this. High acidity. <coughs> high acidity, yes. Yes. High acidity. Okay. Go figure. And so then our third course is a smoky beef carpaccio. Right? With the, that's with a furioso. Furioso, yes. You can't buy any. It's sold out. Just so you know. Rick has the last whatever, is, and it's gone. There was a total of uh, 24 bottles that came in. and You got the Fury. It's as actually, good. I, I will be honest. 24 came in. Drank one the day it came in, drank two the day it came in, because I had a good time. Good. We opened a third one. We have. So uh, I have for New Year's. We have 21 bottles left. The entree, uh, Akashi ribeye. We decided to go Kobe. All right. And so we have a little Kobe ribeye paired with the prop red. That's gonna be. That's gonna be. Sh- cool. that's that's gonna be I was gonna say that's gonna, gonna be the shiz. <laughs> that's gonna be the shiz net. Yeah. And then my favorite though is. The Purgatory Merlot. So we got a, a revolver oh, Purgatory right. Merlot, Christ. of which 12 bottles exist in the state of Texas. I have none. <laughs> he has <laughs> none. Zero. You have none. They're yeah. all in here. They're all here, yeah. And that's going to be with a chocolate custard. And let me tell me, the server's going, we can't find this case. Do you have any more? You better find, find that it. case because <laughs> I don't have it anymore. We're not going to be happy. <laughs> but, you know... The thing about Tomoshi that I love about him is I love and hate because when he's prepping for these meals, he'll walk into my office, you know, as Tomoshi does, you need a bottle of this, bottle of this, bottle of that. I'm like, for what? You know, I'm cost cost effective. 
I need to taste the wine as I prep the meal. I'm like, really? It's true. <laughs> really? No, no, I'm on his side. I'm on his side, brother. Really? You know that. Come but, on. Like, but then I, mean, I walk, I walk into the kitchen. as an ingredient, right? I, I understand that. Yeah. I, understand. I walk into right? the kitchen. I walk totally. into the kitchen and he's drinking the wine. He's going like he's this. He's just going. <laughs> And he's flipping two eggs for brunch. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> but I think I've been very blessed. I, 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 I'm very grateful for the people I've met in this industry. Uh, I've met people from, and, and this is the name drop, you know, I've, I've met Julian uh, Rothschild, I've met Christian, uh, I've met Doug Schaefer, which I, is still my funniest story when Dude, I did it. Dude, he helped me through my divorce when you know, we started. I Doug, love that guy. Doug, I met Doug. And I, somehow, so, somebody made a mistake, and I was invited to a 10-year vertical tasting. Uh, yeah, that was uh, Schaefer. Schaefer. <laughs> no, no, no. Schaefer <coughs> Insignia. Uh, uh, Do you know my first? Doug, Doug Corn Estate Cab oh, and, oh, and Chapelet Pritchard Hills. I, got it, I was on the panel. <laughs> And so after, after <coughs> you were on the panel, I was, on the, I was on the panel. <coughs> oh no, my goodness! And so I was on the panel. And so after after we did the first five years, I'm outside talking to this friend of mine, John, and I'm like, dude, they completely effed up. Why? I don't know how my name's here, but I'm on the panel, and he's like, dude, just shut up, go back, sit down, don't say a word. <laughs> and all of a sudden, this this guy that I idolize in our industry, Gary uh, Gary Fish from Fishers in 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 in, uh, in Jersey. Jersey, he goes. Ramos, you absolutely belong on this panel. I'm like, dude, Carrie Fish is talking to me. He knows my name. <laughs> it's just, just dying of laughter. And then oh, all of a sudden, God. I'm going to call you back. Hang up. And he's standing next to Doug Schaefer. And Gary Fish, Doug, I'm Rick Ramos. I'm like, wow. Doug, like, how you doing? And Schaefer goes, fucking hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Schaefer goes, so what do you think of the wine? And then I just went like this. And the business side of me came out. Well, the fact that I just drank my allocation for the last 10 years really bothers me. Yeah, can I get <laughs> and he just looks at me, he just looks at me like, why did I know that was coming? Oh, <laughs> and right? he reaches out, takes out his business card, and he hands it to me. He says, your allocation is every phone call. This is I Dougie? Get, I, yeah, That's I get awesome. Schaefer. I don't, I, they don't deny me Schaefer anymore. But the, the, the cool thing about it was this panel, to me, it, it, it was a dream because... Is that moment when you sit somewhere and you go, okay, quietly somebody take a picture. I have arrived. <laughs> you know, you look at the board and you see oh, you see Schaefer, you see the guy from... from but brother, <laughs> you're the creme of the crop, motherfucker. And I'm seeing all these guys. And then I'm like, dude, that's Lowby. Don't like him. No. Parker. Don't like him either. I like him. And you know, all these guys are there, right? And I'm thinking to myself, oh, this is pretty, pretty cool. And I think to myself, that was arguably one of the best tastings I've ever been at because I don't know who made the mistake and they sent it to Rick Ramos in McAllen, Texas instead of Rick Ramos in New York or right. Chicago right. or something. But I got to go to this tasting. It was really cool. And I can tell you that I've been at that. I've, I've done the mistake of spitting wine next to the wine maker at Lafitte because that was just stupidity. Um, <laughs> You know, I probably would have done the same thing. I, I, <laughs> I mean, just, I'm, I'm the, guy, spit, I'm the guy that had that big old smile next to the owner, Margot, because that was my favorite winery, and she had this really... <laughs> no, I have that in the wall in McAllen. Oh, nice. Um, the scowl. But, but I'm also the guy that has a picture with him, and on the other side, Fabian, and we're all just smiling and laughing because he's hung over as hell on a Sunday <laughs> from two drinking all weekend with us. And, no, and I think that to myself, never and I think to myself this way, and I can, I can really put a stamp on this. In McAllen, Texas, we don't have big pictures like this. We have okay. small pictures of moments in life. Okay. And in those moments, I have a picture of uh, Florencia Hamas on the wall, who I amazing. visited, who she closed. I didn't, so I didn't get to meet her, She's but I met so Christian. She, 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 well, Florencia was here. Last yeah. Saturday, closed it. First oh, time nice. we closed it too. Thank yeah, you. Oh, that's who you were talking yeah. about. Thank yeah. you, Florida. Before, before we were yeah. filming, you were talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to meet Christian. I love you, girl. But that was an amazing I have a experience. Picture of Florence. I have a yeah. picture of Heidi. I have a picture of Julian Rothschild. I have a picture of Christian. I have a picture of Michael Hunnig. Um, good, good. I have a picture of all these great winemakers. Right. Great owners of these things. But you know what's pretty, pretty, pretty effing cool? I have only 
one winemaker that I have two pictures of. An entire wall, Brian Page. Not because he's my friend, because in this life, you only get discovered once. It's my job to make you discover him twice. Oh. I love the I'll fact that it. I can make I'll this like comment. It. He ended up in he ended up in Texas because I made a mistake that I found it. And I will say this with my wholehearted blessing. There's very few wines out there that you can compare to these wines. Very few. If you haven't had the stash, you've done yourself a disservice. I love the fact that today we're going to barrel sample. I love the fact that his comment to me is, before I open it up to the world, to the market, I'm giving you first dibs. He has first dibs. I have first dibs. You're my brother, baby. So we're gonna try it, and if you want some, the really cool thing would be for, one day I'm gonna be able to say this, Brian, you're out of stash. Cause we bought it all. <laughs> I'm right? getting there, we're getting close. Yeah. But so with that said, guys, um, I will do, I, I'm, I'm a very superstitious human being, and I'm gonna do two toasts. Mm. My first one is, the first time I met Mark, we were at a tasting for... Uh, Cade. We were drink, drinking Cade. some Cade, for yes. Cade, for, Cade, right? With, uh, with our Republic rep. Republic, Ooh. yes. And we tried Cade, and I got to meet him, and I will say this. Very few human, human beings have the same passion that we all do. Here's about passion. Mark, mm. here's to your so passion. Nice. And so my second toast is always the comical one or the, the find the humor in life thing. And so the humor in life is this, is if you get the Revolver album and you spin it backwards, it says buy page one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it actually says. That's what it says. There you go. Salud. 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 Yeah, uh, gentlemen, shall we uh, shall we wrap things up on that? Sure. I know you've got some work to do here. We're, ab soon. we're absolutely. We're uh, going to go back over there to the bar where we have a, a legion of people waiting for Brian. Right. Yeah. So we can sample some of his wines. Yeah. And, and so, so he can take pictures and shake hands and kiss babies. There you go. That's it's, my line. It's better than shaking babies <laughs> and kissing hands. I don't know if we know each other too well. <laughs> well, I, I I just have to say this is a, a highlight of of my show. Um, you know, I, I talk about having conversations with people, and usually my interviews are I just I let I just let the people talk. And initially, this was going to be scheduled half an hour. Yeah, no. We're at one hour and seventeen minutes, <laughs> and um, I'm not sure if if, uh, if our PR person is like wringing her hands because we went like forty five minutes we went way over. But I want to let I'm let you guys. Be, I'm talk. probably going to be billed for it, but that's okay. <laughs> sorry, Jessica. <laughs> But um, Thank God I'm not. <laughs> this is, um, you know, I, I've, I've interviewed a decent amount of people um, besides just, you know, deciding to tell you what my opinion about a, a wine is. And this has been one of my favorite uh, ones. I mean, I went to Napa and I got a couple of favorites there. Christian was, you know, Palmas was, was spectacular. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and a couple other people, I mean, there were, there were some spectacular uh, interviews there. Um, but this, this is going to rank up there with, with one of my favorites. Um, I mean, I've been real excited to uh, meet you, and also real excited about to check out the place. Thank you. Um, no. I'm very Doesn't fortunate to, to do it, um, and I'm, just just by you know like karma or just how things work out, I didn't sign up to do anything with the cocktail conference tonight. There was like these events tonight, so the cocktail conference is happening at the same time, and so I did the classes today. They kind of gave me a hard time because I showed them all the uh, all the bourbons I had today, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. which were some pretty amazing bourbons. Right. Um, but I said, you know what, the Friday night things and the, the three o'clock show, the three o'clock classes didn't really inter inter interest me. So I'm gonna take Friday night off and just go home and hang out. And then Jessica, like, said, hey, we've got something going on. I was like, talk about perfect timing. And this is this is awesome. So I'm excited the fact that I got to got to meet you. We, I got to come here, check out the place. We're gonna have some amazing food. I'm gonna try chicken hearts, right? Um, which um, normally I would be like, hell no, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it because I learned with doing wine is that at least try what they put in front of you. Right. <clears throat> you might not like it. I might spit it out. Who knows? But I'm gonna try it. Uh, because I might actually like it. You never know. I've, I, you know, I found that I, sometimes I like some of these things. You know, I, I found out that once, <coughs> once, once, 
I really like MD2020, the sherry. <laughs> I thought it was really good. You the know? sherry, huh? Sure. You know, it was, just, oh, okay. it, it was an upgrade from the Boone Hills. I like Lancer. <laughs> <laughs> the the Boone Hills Pickle Pink was solid. Dude, Howard Pickle Jones. Pink, I mean, that, that, was that, solid. that was my 80s, man. That was my 80s. I have now upgraded. Here, that was my 80s. Salute. Well, gentlemen, salute. 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 Thank you. Thank you Thank for you. joining Thank me. You. Thank you for. Thank you. I'm going to kiss your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Thank folks, you. that's going to do it for this episode of Elite Wine TV. Um, as always, firm me up above. Uh, click the links above to firm me up. I said on this side, so I'm not pointing at anybody. There's that PayPal button over there to hit to throw a couple ducats instead of pointing at these guys. And I'll have links below uh, for uh, Alvinicos and also for Page Wine, Revolver, all the good stuff. And so check everything out. And uh, we will see everyone again next time. Right. Awesome. Claire, you rock. I love you. <laughs>